So hey everyone, um, I'm Jane Cormack. I'm here with Peruqua. Peruqua, how are you Peruqua, pronounce it? Yeah, Peruqua, yeah, you got it. And I've just attended the Voice of the Sacred Feminine workshop here in the Netherlands. So Peruqua has kindly given me the time to answer a few questions around what the Voice of the Sacred Feminine is so you can learn a little bit at home about how to work with this energy. Mm-hmm. So um, the, the workshop's called Voice of the Sacred Feminine. Mm-hmm. So can you share with everyone what actually is the voice of the feminine? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we all have this uh, relationship to our voice and to sound um, and to music, but very few of us have that direct connection to uh, the feminine voice. What is the feminine voice? And it's it's kind of been betrayed throughout history as, as different things, like it could be operatic, you know, this kind of voice. Um, and often it's a very trained voice. When we think of woman singing, we think of a trained voice, or we think of a pop singer, or we think of something we've seen before. Mm-hmm. But actually I think what takes place in the workshop is that women start to come so deeply inside their body, inside their um, their breath, they get very connected to a deep breath that comes from in the belly, in the womb, they start to get very connected to the sexual center, to the to the vagina, to that opening that runs down into the earth Mm -hmm. and it is kind of the root of our relationship to the world, to our sexuality Mm -hmm. Um, and I discovered that, that there's a relationship directly between the vocal cords and uh, and the womb and the and the vagina. Uh, I call it the yoni, just for everybody's, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it means the sacred opening, because that's really what it is. Mm-hmm. And once a woman starts to actually sing from a place that's very deeply rooted mm-hmm. and connected, like she's connected through her breath to a deeper energy, like earth energy and mm-hmm. her own femininity, then there's a place that woman starts to sing from. And it's this very primal kind of place that that are, that are sounds that we don't hear much in the world. Mm. We hear them in nature, yes, absolutely. Mm. But but we as women are a bit afraid to actually let them out. Now, the other place you hear them is in the bedroom mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. when women are making love. If they allow themselves to make love, there's sounds that come out of the body that are truly sounds of the sacred feminine, mm. that are truly sounds that that come from a woman who is totally in her love and opening up. Mm. So that's what takes place in the workshop is the voice of the sacred feminine. When a woman starts to get connected to her love, to her body, to her breath, to the earth, mm. then this voice that is so deep and primal starts to sing from her body, and from different mm. places in her body, from the womb, from the yoni, from, from her heart, from uh, all these different centers in the body. Mm. And uh, so then if you can imagine that uh, in my workshop sometimes there's 150, 200 women a lot singing from this place. There is mm. an enormous power in the sacred feminine and that mm. voice, you know. Mm. And when women start to hear other women singing that's those same sorts of sounds that just come intuitively from their body, Mm. then what happens is we start to trust it. We start Mm. to give ourselves permission because previously with singing we taught that, oh, you have to sound beautiful, you have to be so tuneful. Mm -hmm. But um, I found that once a woman is rooted properly down to the earth and rooted in her breath deep in her belly, Mm -hmm. not just shallow up here, that this sound it actually starts to open her up. I was going to ask, like, what what are these blocks that stop the sound from emerging in women? Um, I, I think we can all relate to a family story where maybe mama or papa or brother or sister said to us, "Oh, shut up! You sound terrible." You know, or a whistle because you can't sing. <laughs> a whistle, <laughs> yeah, or or a choir master. You know, when mm. you were in the school choir and somebody said to you just sing a bit softer, you know, <laughs> you, you can't sing or you mm. didn't get chosen to be in it, you know, and and it's like as soon as we feel the sense of the judge kick in, 
then we actually shut it down. Mm. And I think as children, we sing very intuitively. We sing about everything, actually, mm. when we're kids. We yeah, sing about how we're feeling. We're singing about the car ride we're having. We're singing about our dog. We know we're just, just singing how we feel, and it's a natural flow. Mm. And as soon as that, that judge comes in, that conditionality that says it should sound like this, mm -hmm. then we just literally, it's almost as though somebody grabs us around the throat and there's a lockdown. Now that's one of the things that's happened to many, many people in the Western world. You know? yes. mm. The other thing I find is that, again, because the, the voice is so directly connected to our sexuality, to, to the vagina, to the yoni, mm -hmm. because they're the mirror of each other, when, when a woman's been deeply traumatized, whether she's been raped, or, um, uh, where she's had experience where she's really felt it's against her nature or against her power, you know, then, then often I find that contraction, that uh, trauma gets held in the, in the vagina and in the womb. Mm -hmm. and, and it also creates a lockdown in the voice because she couldn't express, in that moment, she couldn't express that what was happening to her was against her authority, you know. Mm -hmm. And so then she no longer gives herself the authority to be able to express herself as fully and certainly you see it with singing because singing is um, very vulnerable, you know, it's like being it, heard. Yeah, being, being heard. And also it's so mm. personal because it's your voice and it, it's so naked, you know. Mm. So if in the state of nakedness you've been abused, then if you, I ask you to be naked and sing, you're like, you know. So mm. it, it creates a lockdown in, in the body. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's not so much about getting a woman in tune, but actually getting her open again mm -hmm. and getting the sound um, through those centers that are blocked, getting her to sound those centers mm -hmm. open. to open them again. Mm -hmm. And the voice naturally starts to open back up and this pressure in the throat starts to release. Yeah. I've also heard um, that when we're menstruating that it's harder to open the throat or there's a, a tightness that as you say there's a reflection of the uni and the throat that when we're menstruating it's not a good time to, to be singing or performing on stage. Um, I've, this is what I heard from someone who is a singer. Okay. What yeah that's, a, that's an interesting mm -hmm. idea. What I would say is that uh, I don't experience tightness in the throat when I'm performing, mm -hmm. when I'm menstruating, but what I do experience is that when I'm menstruating, my body wants to be still and it wants to be pull my energy inward. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. It wants to nourish, it wants to create, actually. But it doesn't want to be outward. Yes. It doesn't want to. It doesn't want to give my energy away to, to many many people. No, it mm. wants to pull the energy in. So in actual fact, what it did, to to go against your nature like that, you tax your kidney energy, and um, you tax your liver and all the organs that are you know working to clean your body through the menstruating process. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a compromise. So any kind of contraction in the throat is because you're compromising your nature. Okay. So to be outward like that when you're bleeding is against your nature. Right. So that's what I would say really, really, really happens. Mm -hmm. That's really good for <laughs> so many women to hear that, that yeah. it's really like listening to your cycle and honoring each part of the cycle and the inward and the outward and yeah yeah mm. and especially like for me I don't uh, I endeavor not to book anything or do anything for the first two days of my of my period because yeah. it's it's such a sacred time and I find it such a creative time mm. and I if, if I if I do something that's really mental like being on computers a lot in that time I feel so like I've compromised myself mm -hmm. because there's a deeper creativity that wants to come from that that open cervix.
time, you know, that, that you, where you're releasing and cleaning and going in. Because I, I think of that time as, you know, that cervix that's opening up when you're bleeding. Mm -hmm. The door is, it's like a doorway into the, into the cosmos, you know, where that creative energy comes from, that deep feminine energy. So we have to learn as women how to make a space so that we can actually use that energy. It might be that you paint, it might be that you write, it might be that you sit and meditate, you know, but, uh, it might be that you're out on the walk out on the land and sit, you know, by the waterfall or, um, I don't know, by the dike or <laughs> in Holland. But, but yeah, to, to actually utilize that time correctly and, and I definitely advocate women to ring up their boss and say, I can't come in today. Yeah, I'd like to start a new movement where women don't work on the first t two I'm days totally of their cycle. So I'll start that and then you can I'll, I'll have to spread that around. <laughs> definitely, I have been already actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I do encourage women not to feel guilty about that. What what can we do? The work system was not built in support of women's cycle. Mm. So then we have to kind of just take a stand for ourselves. Yes. You know? yeah. I think there's a, there's a lot of guilt around um, taking that time off, you know, to rest and to rejuvenate, especially the women that have you know, families and work and all these things. Absolutely, and I, I feel that because we, we've been conditioned that we should be strong, you know, and um, not to give to myself, so especially for mamas, you know, and for business women that don't want to show that they're weak, you know, that they're, that they're lesser than, but actually I think it's such a great gift, you know, the, the bleed is such a great gift for us. So let's put it back into its authentic place. It's a time to rest and to cleanse and and to really open up and love ourselves. You know? mm. yeah. Really, really important message to keep on sharing and mm. and spreading. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And so when is your um, next event and where do you where do you see yourself sort of growing with the work that you're doing in the world around the voice and the sacred feminine and, and the music that you're creating? Well, my next event is actually in a few days. I have a concert in Riga, in Latvia. Oh, wow. Okay. And then mm -hmm. following that, I'm on a tour at the moment. So the next event is in Minsk after that, which is the voice of the sacred feminine. And then I'll go to St. Petersburg and give another one mm -hmm. there. And uh, then I go to Moscow to launch a a uh, video that I've just made called She, and it's a it's a it's a music clip that we just shot in Bali. Um, I I see that what I'm feeling at the moment in myself is this enormous, very juicy kind of creativity, and it really wants to record. So I know that I'll be in the studio a lot over this next probably six months. Um, and I've just bought more equipment for my home studio because I've realized that you know my favorite place to record is in my home mm. and and I see something like for example I want to create a new birthing CD to to create sound as a um, and the music to hold women while they're actually in labor wow that birthing. would be really powerful for you Moment. Yeah, because you know, because I have these deep feminine sounds, the body understands them. So my voice speaks to the body of the woman who is in labour, and then that's encouraging her to open. Mm -hmm. I just made a CD called "The Milk of Love" to support women who have just birthed a baby and they're breastfeeding, and to remind them to go deeper into their breastfeeding and how to nourish their sensual energy while they're feeding their baby and to nourish their body and to recondition the body to get it back into uh, its and into a new state actually after birth um, and there's music that goes with that as well as guided meditation so these are the kinds of projects that I see uh, coming for the next year mm -hmm. I may also um, dive back into the contemporary world of music and uh, go to LA and record uh, another more contemporary style CD with a female producer there mm -hmm. and um, I just recorded in LA a song called Be Yourself that I, I composed for my daughter and it's mm. really super hip, it's really cool 
with very contemporary production. So mm. I think I'll do a whole CD on mm. contemporary style. Have you done that before? Is this something new? It's new for me to go completely contemporary. Um, uh, my style has been more world music, more ethnic fusions, more of that Middle East and Eastern uh, jazz kind of flavors, you know. But yeah, to do something like that 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 reaches a much um, uh, more say conventional audience yeah. is also an inspiring project because the themes are very deep. Always. Yeah, your music is it has such depth and it yeah and it moves people emotionally and it really reaches vibrationally a place that lots of music just doesn't touch so um like the music you create that not the contemporary style but would is that music that women play in the background while they're going through certain processes. The birthing one is, as you just yeah. mentioned, but yeah. you've got an emotional cleansing one as yeah. well. So that's yeah. really yeah, exactly, because mm. I really realise that as women, like we live in such a separate reality from each other, thinking that what we're going through emotionally is it's just happening to us. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm the only one falling to pieces <laughs> today, you know. Mm. But often if you actually really honestly communicate with other women, you say, oh, hey, there's a movement today and there's lots of other women feeling really emotional today, you know. Um, but, but the other thing we try and do with women is just to talk about it, you know. And I found mm. that talking doesn't always... Uh, get you in deep enough to mm. move the energy through your body. Mm. So I created emotional cleansing as a as a process where women can uh, be spoken down into the body, so they come into that depth that I'm speaking of with the breath, mm -hmm. so they're rooted properly with their voice open. And then I've um, on that recording I put five different emotions: mm -hmm. fear, um, grief. Um, longing, uh, ecstasy, and anger. Mm. And uh, so I've created tracks where I'm singing and there's also music. Mm. And it encourages women to actually open up their voice and let that anger come through and to mm. dance with the music because it's quite mm. rhythmical, you know. Um, or to let that grief completely come through. The grief music will just make you cry just if you listen to it. Mm. You know, I made it like a soundtrack, a grief soundtrack, you know. So it supports women to actually go through the process of letting it come through so it doesn't actually get stuck in her body. Yeah, because it's hard to do on your, on your own or, you yeah. know, there's not always workshops to go to. So to have that opportunity to use music because it's such yeah. a powerful catalyst to move things through your body. Yeah, and be a bit guided with it as well and a bit held and how to rebalance the energy afterwards as well when it goes through you, you know, when you've had a big rah, you know. <laughs> so that's, that's an important CD, I think, for women. And uh, it, it was birthed out of just doing so many workshops and realising that when women go home, they need to be able to be held in the same way. Yeah. This, this workshop is like, it's a holding space and there's so many women there and it's such a powerful energy that it's often the after part where women are going home or yeah. we're alone that things start shifting and moving and yes. we, you know, women need that support more than after the workshop has yeah. happened. So um, yeah, it's wonderful that this is available and that you share this. So thank you so much yeah. for everything you've shared and thank you for the weekend. My pleasure. Yeah. It's lovely to meet you and... Um, and just a good woman doing good work. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to share the share the message that you're sharing. Mm. Thank you again for sharing. Mm -hmm. And I'll share Purukwa's um, link to her website below. So if you're interested in her music or her workshops, then you can check it out. So thank you for watching. And thank you again. And I'll see you next time. Okay, bye for now. Bye. bye.